Hello everybody and what you can see in front of you is the new 1.75 micro chapbook basic edition rule book this is the new definitive rules for the system so this is the rule book you want to be buying with character generators, dungeon generators, mobs, town generators, tavern, inn generators, NPC inner generators, shop generators Encounter generators, etc. etc. Everything you need there to play the game. We're not going to go on too much. I'm not going to waffle on for half an hour. We're going to quickly play a game, or hopefully quickly, and that should answer all your questions. Now, the game we're going to play, I'll just show you the rule book. You can download this quick start rules for free, and this is it. It is that simple. You can download that, you can play Micro Chatbook RPG, or you can invent your own game with these rules. That's simple. And you also, I will provide the link to download the adventure we will be playing. There is many adventures like this, which are pay what you want. So you can leave a, leave a donation, or obviously you can get it for free if you want. So we're gonna be playing this adventure. Now, the character we're using is maybe a little bit strong for this adventure, but will be fine for the purpose of the video and my character you can see I have a visual representation here that I've drawn is an axe dwarf he is erst rock fist he is level one in micro chapbook RPG you don't roll your stats you get given seven points to distribute between strength dexterity wit and charisma I've, and that's at level zero. I've started him at level one, so I've given myself nine points. You get an extra point of dexterity because he's a ranger, and I get an extra point of strength because of my lineage. Lineage is sharp, and that is from Dwarfs of the Hellforge. And sharp... Sharp is an ancient strength, originally a lowly family line of miners who did the dirtiest work in the deep mines. They rose because of their sheer strength and size of stature, these dwarves at least. Sharps are granted one strength. And I've also got the talent of proficient axe, which means I get to roll two dice and choose one. So I roll efficient, I roll advantage when I'm using an axe. I've got that written there. We have a crossbow that does 1d8 damage. We have a great axe that does 1d8 plus 1 damage. Obviously that's a d8, I mean you know that. Um, I didn't have these weapons initially, but this dwarf has been through some adventure and has managed to purchase better weapons and some better equipment. He has blessed armor, which gives him plus six health and willpower. These are down here. He has a bear skin cloak, plus six will and a horned helmet plus three will in the rules this is just a, a magic cape and a, and a magic helm i've just renamed them to suit the picture but they, i paid the same gold for them and give them the same stats these are items that i managed to find in the last dungeon deal we've done a resurrection brew a steak meal a potion and some mead we've got 11 gold we have 39 xp we get plus one damage that's because we're level one um, normally I use, where are they? I use these little knitting row counters. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, people use them when they do knitting to count the rows. They go up to 99, they're really cheap. Get a few of them, happy days. But for the purpose of the video, we're using dice. So health I've got as red, because hearts. Willpower we've got as um, purpley blue. Hopefully you can see them okay. So without further ado, let's start. So the first thing we need to do, we need to roll a D20, 10. So that means we've got a room that's 10 squares big and we want a D3. So we roll a D6, one and two is one, two and three is two, sorry. One and two is one, three and four is two, five and six is three. We basically half it and round up. So that would be two. So it means we've got two doors. So we just try and draw. I'm not gonna try and be too pretty. 
So we've got 10 squares. That's like that in case you can't see it. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. And two doors. And we put an E in here and that's the entrance. Um, so now we're gonna roll to see what the door, how the door is. We've got a five. So if we look, and I've already thrown away everything I need, here's our quick quest. On the doors, three is a rusty lock. The door has a rusty old lock on it. Make a wisdom check or wits check to pick it or strength check to break it. If you fail, spend one willpower to retry. Well, obviously we've got a strength of four, so we're gonna try and smash it down. So we've got to roll four or under. We got six. So we lose, six is an instant fail. So we lose a willpower. So we to try again. Five. Right, so that was a good option then. Oh, there's no zero on these. I just realized that's, that's, um, that's an epic fail on my part, quickly. <laughs> ah, that didn't work out very well. I didn't think that out very well, did I? There we go. So we're down to 40. All right, roll again. Four, yippee. So we've smashed this door down. Okay. So we're now rolling the D20 for the room size and the D3 for how many doors we're going to get. I, I always chuck these in together. Right, so we've got a room size four. That is actually... That does actually have some relevance and we've got two doors so i'm actually gonna make this a t shape because that's a nice shape for a two door room okay now the reason i said it's got some relevance i'm going to mention it now before i forget um, you have to have a room size bigger than six i believe to be able to use ranged weapons ranged attack if a room is six squares or larger, you may make a ranged attack. Okay, so we'll be no ranged attack in there, so our crossbow will be no good to us. So we need room type. Room type is one. This is a hallway, a dark and drafty hallway with gutter and torches to light the way. No effect. Some of the some of the rooms have an effect. I normally put the room type. That's that's not one as in room number one. That's one as in type one hallway that's to remind me during combat if i forget so now on the back of this sheet is a list of mobs so we're going to roll four so we've got cultist swordsman you can see on there and he has wisdom damage of 1d3 and health damage of 1d4 he has a dice modifier of zero a life of seven, and there can possibly be four of them. So I normally get a sheet of paper. I'll write down cultist. I'll write in pen so you can see. Hopefully you can see better. Swordsman. We need to know how many of them there are. There are four. So that means they've got 28 health. As, as a group, they've got 28 health. And if you wanted to, you could write down Wisdom 1d3, um, Wit, Willpower 1d3's damage, and Health 1d4. I tend not to do that, because you're probably going to have your little table in front of you anyway, and you'll be able to see that. So now we're going to do combat. So actually, we'll keep our piece of paper here. Right, the way combat works is the first thing we have to do is we have to roll for charisma. Now, we've got a charisma of three, so we've got to roll three or under. If we had proficiency in charisma, which we haven't, we've got proficiency in um, dexterity because we're a ranger. If we were a bard, we'd have proficiency in um, charisma. Anyway, we need to roll a bravery check. And the bravery check includes the mob's dice modifier, which is zero, so there's no modifier. So six, six is an instant fail. So this is where 
we take the 1d3 wits damage. Will, I keep calling it wits, that's willpower damage. Six, so that's three. So we're now on 30. I just realized they had to be d10s, didn't they? That was never gonna work otherwise. 37, so I need another d10, that's okay. I've got everything that we need in here. I thought I had it planned better than that, but clearly I didn't. All right, so there's our 34. Oh, now I've moved everything, that's all good. All right, so we have begun. We have took willpower damage. Now, normally we could now roll a dexterity check for a ranged attack, but the room is smaller than six squares, so we're going straight on to melee round. And we get to roll, because we have proficiency axe, we get an advantage roll when using an axe. And we've got a great axe. So we're rolling a D8. No, we're not. We've got to roll two D6s. And the, one of them's got to be under four. Well, they're both under four. So we've hit. That is our strength roll to see if we actually hit. So we now get to roll a D8. We get three plus one. And we get plus one on our damage modifier, so we actually hit with five. So I will just normally go one, two, three, four, five, like that. Then the round starts again, and it does start with your bravery check every single time. So we roll for charisma, we fail. We now roll a D3 for willpower damage. We take two. I think a high charisma is quite important in this game. I think I learned that much, but I really don't want to play a bard all the time. <laughs> all right, so now again we don't get the de we don't do the um, ranged attack, so we go straight for melee. So we roll our two attack die. We got a four, otherwise we're lucky if that could have been an instant fail. But you discard the dice you don't want, so we did pass the attack roll. We roll our d8. We got two plus eight. Sorry, two plus one plus one, four. One, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure the damage carries over. I think you score the monster's health as a group. I could be wrong. I may make many mistakes in this video. Never mind. Right, so back to the charisma roll. Two, we passed. If you pass the charisma roll, you gain a point of willpower. So we're back up to 36. We now roll... We've got a three, that's under four for our melee attack. I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope I've explained it sufficiently. Three is our one D8 plus one, plus one is five. One, two, three, four, five. If we fail a melee roll, we will take damage. We will then roll on the, the one D4 damage from, you take damage from one of your opponents, not from the whole group, unless it states otherwise on the sheet. The free adventure mobs are quite simple. The mobs in the full adventures have more modifiers. Where it says minion, that might say something like swordsman or spearman, or they might have some ability like execution or or something, teleport or whatever, and that will have more modifiers. But anyway, we're not doing that. We're playing this one. So we got one on our bravery check, so we get a will point back. We go for our attack and melee. We rolled a one, that's a guaranteed pass. And we got six. As you can see, having an advantage for melee is quite quite a big thing. Um, I didn't even know what I was rolling for. Then I was actually rolling for bravery, which is the charisma roll, which we just failed. So we roll a D3, so we take two. Two damage. This is why it's easier to have this than I don't like having a pencil and rubbing out because you're forever writing and forever rubbing out. You, they actually sell some micro chapbook disc counters, which are quite nice. Print your own, stick them together. Revolving discs work very well. Or the knitting needles counters, or use dice, or use pen and paper. But rubbing out, I tend not to write on the character sheet until the end of the game. Like most of this would be written in pencil, but I wrote it in pen for the purpose of this video. 
Right, so that was the charisma roll, that was the damage roll. Now we need to check our melee attack. We need to score under four. One. I'm actually hoping to take some damage so you can see how that works. Seven plus one plus one is nine. Well, that takes us to 29, so that's obviously better than 28. So they're dead. We've killed the cult of swordsmen. What we get to do now is we get to roll a d6 for treasure. We got three. So we've got three gold pieces. And what you also get is you get XP. You get however many mobs there were minus your level. Well, there was four mobs and we're level one. So we get three XP as well. So hopefully that wasn't too, too crazy. Right. Now we need to roll a d20 for the room size and a d6, or that's a d3, sorry, for how many doors there are. So that's half it and round it up. So that'll be one. So we've got five again. So we, we, again, we have no, no melee. Oh, we, sorry, I've done that wrong. We need to roll. We'll keep these. No, we won't. We'll start again. We need to roll, we need to choose a door and roll to see the condition of the door before we leave. So the door is a five. Five is a sturdy lock. This door has a sturdy iron lock on it. Make a wits check to pick it. If you fail, spend one willpower to retry. Right. I've only got wits of two, so this could be bad. But we're gonna go for it anyway. We've, I think we've got to try it at least once because we've chosen that door. We could always swap doors if we want. So that's a five. So that's cost me a willpower to, to try again. That's a three. Do we keep bashing ahead against this door? I think we do. One. So that's a guaranteed pass. So we're now through through the door. 13, that's a bit better, just so I could, I'm not trying to cheat here, but I'd like to have a bigger room so I can show you the um, ranged attacks as well. So we've got a room size 13 with one door. Remember, we that's a D3, so we half it and round it up. So 13, oh, I don't know. I mean, that's four. But then if we put nine on four, that's 13, isn't it? And the amount of doors doesn't include the, the one you've already got. So we know we want to see what type of room it is. Type two. Oh, this is more interesting. We've got a prison cell. This room holds a prison cell with a prisoner waiting inside to be sacrificed after combat, which means we'll probably forget to do it. Make a wits check to pick the lock and free them. If you pass, they thank you before running off and you gain 1d6 willpower. All right, we'll forget to do that. <laughs> room two. And again, it's not the second room, it's um, room type two. Right, so what sort of monsters have we got? Four. I believe that's what we had last time. Was it not? Yeah, we've got more of the swordsmen. I won't bother boring you. We're writing that out again. We'll just put uh, them, swords. We could even put number four. That would tell us what we've got. We need to know how many of them. Six. Um, there is a maximum of four of them. So you just, if you roll a six, you just have four. So we've got 28 health again. So we're now going to go through this process again, but this time we'll be doing some ranged attacks. And I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Oh, excuse me, that's nearly cold. Right, charisma. Oh, jumbo dice didn't want to come through. So we take um, 1d3 damage, willpower damage, so we take maximum, which is 3, so it brings us down to 30. I don't think we've been that low yet. Right, so the room is bigger than 6, so we get to roll for our dexterity, which is only 2. But we have advantage on dexterity because we are proficient in dexterity. So we get to roll two dice 
and choose one. Right, ne ah, neither of them are as good as two. So we've failed, but we don't take any damage for that. Again, in the actual main rule back, not so much a swordsman, but if someone was a spearman or a bowman, or they had a sling or any kind of ranged weapon, you would probably take damage if you failed, excuse me, if you failed a um, ranged attack. But we didn't. So now we're rolling. Now we get advantage again because of our proficiency axe talent. Like I said, this character is quite strong for this dungeon, but as a teaching example, he will do. So both of our rolls are underneath what we need to get. So we got seven, so that's nine straight away. One, two, three, four, four, nine. <clears throat> right, back to the charisma roll, which we failed. So we get D3 damage, which is one. So we're now on 29. Because you've had a couple of D10s handy. That was nearly embarrassing. Right. We get to roll advantage on dexterity for the ranged attack. Yet again, we failed. Now we get to roll advantage on the axe. Got six and a two, so we passed. One, one and one is three. In case you didn't know that. <laughs> Not trying to patronise you. Sorry for my English sarcasm humour. We failed the... Um, sorry, I might be going a bit fast here. That was the charisma roll, the bravery roll. You enter a bravery roll every round of combat. 1d3. 1. We take 1 damage again. Right. Can we please get a ranged attack? 1. Guaranteed pass. So we get to choose our crossbow, which is also a D8. That's two plus one on our damage modifier, three. You always do, a, well, you don't have to do a ranged, a dexterity attack, a ranged attack, unless, again, sometimes a modifier will say that you have to do one because your opponent might have ranged weapons. But normally you don't have to do a ranged attack, but you do have to do a melee attack. That is... That is a part of the rule, and the rule, and obviously the reason you have to do a melee attack is because this is also your defence as well. If you fail, you've, you've, you're defending. So we've passed the melee attack again. We are lucky that we've got advantage all the time. We're unlucky that we're rolling ones on the damage, though. We could do with all these ones when we're rolling for charisma. Bravery attack roll, six, epic fail. Two damage. Have we even passed a charisma test? I don't know if we have. Ranged check. We failed the range check. Melee check. We passed. Five, seven. Obviously, that's the the axe is D eight plus one, and we get we got damage modifier. We're on 25, so this should do it really, unless we completely fail. So two, we actually passed our charisma check. It'd be handy if we get a different mob, because we can use some dice modifiers as well. So we get one back. We get a, we get a willpower back. Yippee. I normally run out of willpower before I run out of health if you've got a strong character. Unless you're playing with a bard or a performer, then you have charisma there's your proficiency, so you get to roll two dice every time for your bravery check, which is very good. But like I said, I don't really want to play a bard all the time just for that. I don't like to meta game. I'd rather lose miserably than meta game. I mean, you're playing solo. Who, who are you trying to beat? Oh my god! So we got yeah, that took us to thirty damage. So that's we've beat them. We now roll on a d6 for gold. Right, if you get a six. You roll on the item chart, which is, we have got a full rule book, but we'll use the quick rules. Have we got an item list in the quick rules? Um, treasure. Oh, it says here, normally if you roll a six, you've got a full items chart of a, of a list of six items you can choose, that you don't choose from, you roll on. But because this is the quick rules, you're just going to get, if you get a six, you find a potion. Right, and a potion 
is um, 1d6 health. Right, we've already got one potion, so we'll just change that to two times potions, yeah? So we've got potion, and that's three XP again. Um, I think that's 100 XP for a level, something like that. Don't worry about that, that's in the big rule book. Right, so that room is cleared. So we now we've got our one door. We need to roll to see what sort of door it is. One. One will be completely open. This is a stone archway. This is an open stone archway allowing you to see into the next room. You can generate the next room and monsters before choosing to enter. Well, that's quite novel because I've never seen that before. Because I've, I've not even played this quick quest before. So I went straight out and bought, bought some books because the pricing is extremely good. I encourage you to have a look. <laughs> ah, I told you we'd forget. Prison cell. We get to do a wits check. We're going to do that now. <laughs> Try and pick the lock and free the prisoners. So we've got wits of two. Six. All right, we failed, so we don't get that anyway. Right. So we've got our archway, so we can generate our room, which is 19. That's massive. And it's got two doors. So 19, help me with the mass, three times six. Um, that's a bit of a boring shape, I know, but I'm just trying to. We've got two doors. Let's have one on the side there, one on the side there. We're going to see what sort of room it is. It's a prison cell again. They like prisoners in here. Let's see what sort of monsters we've got. I say, don't be four, so I want to have a different. Flying blood bats. Let's get this. Blood bats. Can you see the map? I know you're not going to answer me because I'm not on a live stream. And I can't see because I'm... Um, that part of I'm recording this on a mobile phone and the part, the part that's got the map, map on is in the clamp. Right, so they've got wisdom damage of 1d2. When I do 1d2, I roll a d6. Odd numbers are one, even numbers are two. You can do it other ways, that's up to you. Oh, the damage is 1d2, these are pretty weak. And they've got a damage modifier, a dice modifier of minus one. They've got a life of one, and there's a maximum of six of them. How many is there? One. <laughs> this is like not even worth drawing the room for. Right. Oh dear. Let's splatter the bat. Did you see that? Am I doing that like where you can see it? I'm sorry. Blood bats times one. Um, willpower damage, 1d2. Health damage, 1d2. Dice modifier, minus one. So dice modifier, minus one is good. So instead of having to roll a three, that's um, there. DM minus one, yeah? So instead of having to roll a three for charisma, now we can get away with a four. Four or under. Six. Excellent. So we've got wisdom, will point, will power damage of 1d2. So odd numbers are 1, even numbers are 2. 1. So we take 1 damage. Right, we're now going to mess this bat up. If we don't, I'll laugh. So we're rolling. We've got a big enough room that we can do a ranged attack, more than 6 squares. We get a ranged attack in, and it doesn't matter what we roll because he's got 1 life. So, you know, we didn't even need to roll, and of course we get maximum. So, splat the bat. There might be some gold in this room. And we've also got a prisoner con to consider. Right, we've got two gold. We've got two gold pieces. We've also got... I know I said that that's how many mobs there are, minus your level, but that goes to a minimum of one. So, we get one XP. Now, we're going to do... A, um, what do you call it? Wits check. Five. We failed. The prisoners are still there. Now, can you see my map? Because I've drawn it in pencil. But how I would do this at the end, so I do like ink in my map, so I'll draw the doors. The only reason I draw the doors first is so I don't draw a big fat line right through them when I draw the walls. I was going to do this at the end and speed it up. But as I'm not sure whether you can see my map or not, I'm going to quickly do the little bit we have done. And I'll use a fat sharpie. 
people have asked me to do a tutorial on this, and I don't want the same patronising because I don't think that's fantastic, but it is easy, and you can end up with something that looks quite nice at the end. Just use some nice beefy lines for your main walls so they separate from everything else. So they stand out nicely. I use, this is just a Sharpie. I use, the first pen I used is a Papermate Flare, which is basically just a felt tip pen. You get like a pack of three for about four pound or whatever. They're not a lot of money at all. They're not like posh cartography pens or anything. I do that. And I normally do something, I normally put stairs in the front just to sort of make it a little bit different so you know it's where you're coming in. Um, let's go mad while we're here. I won't take me many minutes because I'm not going to show you how quick it is. I normally do a tiled floor like that. This is super simple. Try and make it look a little bit different. I'm trying to rush here because obviously I don't want to bore you. This wasn't meant to be a how to draw a dungeon tutorial. This is more of a micro chat book. Then you can add little things like cracks on your tiles, some dots, you know, whatever you like. Bust off corner. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. I might do later. So then I'll have an E. A one, two, two. Remember, it's room type, not room number. And hopefully, the ink's dry enough. Then I get me a razor, and you rub all the pencil out. You actually got a decent looking map. I don't know if you can see on here, but I've got dot paper. Um. Just go online and search dot grid paper and you can download loads of it, just print it out, do what you want. Anyway, you can see my map now. So we're now gonna see what sort of door we got here. Four. The scores on the doors. This is Blood in the Bane Forge, by the way. You know, I'm not being very thematic, not telling you anything about it. We got a stuck door. This old door is stuck shut. Make a strength check. And as usual, if you fail, you spend a willpower to retry. You can actually spend a willpower to re-roll any dice you want during the game. Ah, sorry, coffee pours. But as you can see, we're burning through willpower quite quickly anyway. So it's not something you want to spend too freely. So we've got to do a strength check to get through this door. So that's a six, but we get another dice. I forgot. We No, we don't get another dice. We've not got proficiency in strength. We only get proficiency while using the axe. There you go. So it cost us a willpower to have the second try. We're through the door. So we're going to roll for a room. One. I can't even remember ever having a room. One. That's a cupboard. <laughs> and our cupboard has got two doors. So that's amazing. So we're going to put one door there and we're going to have one door coming off there. What sort of room is it? Four. Have we had four? No, we've got a ritual room. A poor soul hangs from ropes attached to the ceiling over a wash base and their neck has already been cut. Filling the vessel. Plus one to all bravery checks. Oh, great. <laughs> Oh, I know what I forgot with the bat as well. I oh, see this is the problem with doing YouTube or trying to play. But we had the dice modifier a minus one. I remembered it on the bravery checks, but I don't know if I remembered it anywhere else. But anyway, anyway, this room we got plus one to all our bravery checks. So let's see what sort of monsters we got to deal with. Two. That's the bat again, isn't it? That is the bat again. I felt felt sorry for the bat. Should we roll for a bigger number? Six. That is the boss, so we can't have the boss yet. Three. Okay. 
They'll have a dagger acolyte. I'm not trying to cheat here and fudge the dice, but I didn't want the bat was just humiliating. Right, so we've got a dagger acolyte. There is actually, while I'm trying to write and speak, oh my God, that's like too much going on at once. Um, there's a maximum of four of these. We got a four, ironically. The conditions for meeting the boss are, we have already met one of at least the other five monsters at least once. I may fudge this just to end the video because, you know, once you've seen it, you've seen it all. We don't want to go around in circles all night. Or you keep a tally of how many mobs you've met. And each time you get a new lot of mobs, you roll a D66. That's two D6s. One is your 10s. One is your 1s. Now, the way I normally do this is I do alphabetical order, so I don't forget. So that would be blue and red. So B becomes before R in the alphabet. So that would be 63. So there's no way we've met 63 mobs yet. We've met, what, 4, 8, 9. This will be 13. Right, so anyway... What is occurring? Oh yeah, Dagger Acolytes. And they've got a 1d2 willpower damage, 1d3 health. This is actually quite an easy adventure and this character is massively overpowered. I should have just rolled up a new character for it really. But as I said, it'll do for the purpose. They've got a life of five. So that means we're gonna have 20 health on this as a group. And they got a damage a dice modifier of zero, so we haven't got to think about that. But what we have got a dice modifier of is plus one on all our bravery rolls, which we tend to fail repeatedly as it is. So this is room type four, the ritual room. So we're going to start off with a charisma roll. We got two with plus one is three, and that is still more. That is still sufficient. We still survive. Obviously, the room is smaller than six squares, so we do not get a range attack. So we roll our two proficiency dice for proficiency acts. Normally, you would roll one, unless you get proficiency in it. You can read the rules yourself. You'll find, there's a, we've got a one. One is instant pass. Seven, eight, seven, plus one, plus one is nine. Yeah, you only roll two dice for attack if you've got proficiency in something. As a ranger, we get proficiency in dexterity. We get proficiency with an axe because of our talent. Unless you've got a talent, you'll only have proficiency in one of the stats. Okay. So that round is finished. So we roll for charisma again. Four, we failed. So we're going for 1d2 of willpower damage. Odds are 1, evens are 2. So we take 1. 1 damage. I think we put, we passed our last charisma attack and I didn't add the 1 on, but you know, who cares? We're, over, we're a bit OP in here anyway. We don't get a ranged attack, so we're rolling double 1. That's perfect. I mean, you should get a super smash for that, but... Eight. That's a fair super smash, plus one, ten. Add another ten to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need one more damage. We have not been hit yet. Six. You don't get much worse than that. Three. That's as bad, bad as it gets. Twenty-one. Yeah, I think we should have given ourselves a willpower earlier, but I'm not going to cry about it. Melee, we only just got the melee. So we've not got plus one on all our rolls, just plus one on the bravery rolls because of the room, because there's a corpse hanging in there. This is actually quite grim dark, micro chat book. Well, that doesn't matter what that lands on. We have killed them. We got one gold piece. And we got three XP. Let's try this door. One, that's an open archway. We know what that means. That means we get to roll. Let's draw this as we go now. We get to roll room contents and everything. 
before we get, and choose whether we go in there or not. Right, so it's 10. How many doors? One. 10, well you can do what you want. You can do whatever shape rooms you want, but I'm just trying to work a bit quickly because I'm trying to record and do something sensible with you good people. What sort of room is it? Two. Have we had a room two? It's the prison cell again. Okay, we've got to try and remember for Will Wits check at the end. See if we can get these dudes out of here, or dude or dudette. Um, monsters. Four. Well, that's the swords people again. Okay, they'll do. They're quite, they're reasonably hard, which is a bit of a challenge. There's a maximum of four of them. And we've got four of them again. So, swords. You probably can't see me right, and I should move the pad to where you can see it. And they've got, we know what they've got us up here. They've got a will of, willpower damage of D3. Health damage of D4. They've got no dice modifier. And they have a health a life of seven, so we need to get, they've got a group health of 28. And we have enough room, that's room, that's another room too. We have enough room to use ranged attacks. I'm trying to think of 20 things at once here. What I was thinking of is this room type two, room type two and room type two. Ah, Noah, I forgot his name. Noah, the author of Micro Chatbook, does regular like monthly mini zines, little magazines with little adventures in, and the mini adventures, which are called songs, um, you normally get so each room type can only appear once. So they happen really quickly. That's the sort of the name of the game. Six rooms and you're, and you're into the boss. But we might do that in a little while anyway, to, just to wrap up, because there's only so much we can do here. I mean, I'm not trying to grind XP or gold or anything. I'm just trying to make a video. So we will have this piece of combat. So we're rolling for, for um, charisma for our bravery check, which we passed. So we get one back. I'm sure we should have had one earlier. I'm going to go on about it. We're now going to roll our dexterity, so our proficiency is dexterity, so we get two d6s, we get to choose one of them. Obviously we're going to choose the best one, which is the one, which is below two. Then we get to roll for our crossbow. Seven plus one, damage modifier. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's, that is seven. <laughs> I was making ticks quicker than I was counting. We now get to roll proficiency on our axe, so we get two dice, choose one. They're both good enough. We roll the axe, two plus one plus one is four. And the round starts again with your bravery check, which we clearly fail miserably. Um, we've got a D3 for willpower damage, one. So we knock this back down again to 21. We roll our proficiency for our ranged attack. We've got a one, one is automatic pass. Three plus one is four. It's just like a maths lesson, isn't it? RPGs are maths, I'm afraid, but they're simple maths. Good for your kids. Get them into RPGs, good for the imagination, good for the maths. Right, we get to roll our ax. Plus one, plus one is five. One, two, three, four, five. We're on 20 damage already. We've not even been touched yet. So we've not failed. We've not failed a melee roll. I played the other night and you never seen so many fives and sixes. Fail, 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 fail. But that is a pass for our bravery. Yeah, I just rolled fives and sixes, fives and sixes, and just taken damage after damage. Had to run away from the dungeon. Okay. That was a bravery, wasn't it? So we get to roll proficiency for ranged, which we got. Six. And then we're going to... Four and four. We nearly failed. I would have liked to have failed, but 
All you know what's going to happen. If we fail, we roll a 1d4 and we take that much damage off our health. That's simple. We'll, we'll fight the boss in a minute and something might happen. Um, what am I doing? Is that a melee attack? That is, isn't it? And we passed. No, we didn't. We just done that. We rolled a double four. So I should be rolling for damage, which is six, which is eight, which is everyone's dead. It don't matter. I wouldn't bother putting any more ticks because that's enough. That's over 30. So we roll for gold, which is five. And we get three XP again. I've got no idea how long this video has been going, but I think we are going to fight the boss in the next room just because there's no point. I don't need to play a whole dungeon to show you how to play the game. So we're going to roll for this. Oh, yeah, we've got to roll and see if we get the prisoner out, haven't we? We're rolling for wits, so we've got to roll under two. We get the prisoner out, so we get to roll a d6 for willpower. Two. That's about right. I thought it'd have been a one. I normally roll really rubbish when I'm rolling for stuff like that. So we got a prisoner out. Someone's happy. We now need to see what this door is. Two. That is probably an unlocked door. Yeah, that is unlocked, so we can move through freely. Can you see that? I just sort of wave out there. Right, so that door is freely available to us. I'm gonna just do this while I'm here. Ta -da, dee -dee -dee. I didn't I didn't draw that door in, did I? Never mind, we won't worry about it. We didn't we're not using it. If I was playing properly, I would draw the door in, but we're not using it, so who cares? I'm hoping, you probably look at the top of my bald head now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that this is enough for you to at least understand the game, because most of the game is of just the basic rules is combat. There is other books that bring in loads more elements to the game, loads more role play and wilderness and adventure and excellent books. I recommend them all. Whoo! So we need to do, we're, we're through the door, the door's unlocked, we need room size. 15, well that's good, that means we get to shoot bolts at the boss at least. And then, we need to roll, how many doors has got? Not that's relevant because we're not going to be leaving. Three doors. Okay. 15. How shall we do this? Um... What's that? That's four, six. We got here one, two, three, four, five, ten, fourteen. What are we going for? Fifteen. Fifteen and three doors. Well, that would be something like that. Then we'll have a door out of there. The prettiest room we had, and we're not going to use any of them doors probably. Right. So, room type. We need to know room type. Room type is six. A tower. This that's ironic. There's that's sort of quite thematic. If you look like we're going to fight the boss in a tower, we're looking over a breathtaking landscape. Gain back one d two health. We're at maximum health and one d three willpower. All right. So we got one because one d three is half it round up. So we get one willpower. That's helped us. Right, the boss is a blood cult high priest. Okay, so we're going to have the high priest. High priest. He's going to do a will damage of 1d4 and a health damage of 1d8. And he's got a dice modifier of plus one. And he's got a life of 20. And there's only going to be one of him, so we don't need to roll to see how many there is. Right. Um, I'm trying not to stick my head. I don't know how much this video has got my head in it. Me leaning over the page. I normally play this on the sofa. 
I know this is like such a compact game. I normally play this on the sofa with my dice and my little counters I showed at the start of the video in there. I use this notebook. Well, I don't use that notebook anymore. I did to start with, but I'll show you what I use in a minute. I'm just going to do this while we're here. We're going to finish it, make it look quite decent. It's um, room type six, I believe. Was it six? Yes, yeah, a tower, isn't it? And we fight the boss in six. The boss is a dice roll of six as well. So I know we didn't roll for the boss, but we rolled a six. There you go. And like I said, you put a few cracks in, colour some corners in black, put a few dots in. And um, this is a lot faster than I'd normally do it, but I'm just showing you how quickly, if you're not the sort of artistic type, how quickly and easy it is to make a dungeon you're actually probably quite like the look of when you're finished. You make one of these with about 20 rooms. You can easily get this grid, by the way, is 20 by 28. It doesn't have to be, but I find that's quite a nice size for these sort of dungeons. If you cram that full, you'll have over 20 rooms in there. 20 by 28. Like I said, it's not ruling, but that's how I do it. Right. Boss fight. We've got a plus one dice modifier, so everything's harder. So we might take some damage. So charisma. Six. So we're straight into some willpower damage. He's doing 1d4. We get the big triangle out. Don't know if you can see that because that's the top number. You're, you're sort of looking top down, but that's two. So we're taking two. We're down to 23. We've now got a ranged attack. Again, we've got, to, we've got to go under two, but his dice modifier of plus one applies to all checks. Doesn't apply to the damage, but applies to the checks. So one of them needed to be a one, and we got a one. So we get to attack with the crossbow. We get six plus one. Which I don't need to tell you is seven. Now we get to attack melee. We got one and four. See, the four this time wouldn't have been good enough because the plus one would have made a five. Like I said, this character is overpowered. I know I've already said it. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, he's nearly dead already. Bless him. All right, charisma check. We failed, not surprisingly. Oh no, it's not that one, it's the D4. We got three that time, down to 20. We're gonna walk, this is a walk in the park for us. And we have, we have booked early with the boss. We could have gone around a lot further and we could have took a lot of damage. We've got the Axeman Executioner. He's also on a plus one modifier. He's got 10 life. It could have made life difficult. And if you play in the proper rules, the full rule book, da -da 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 -da, um, Executioner actually rolls. If you roll a six with an instant fail, the Executioner rolls a D20. And if he gets a 20, he cuts your head off. And that's the end of the game. You're dead. So there are other modifiers in the full game. Right, so we took three damage. We're now rolling our dexterity. Right, the two would normally be good enough, but we got a plus one, so we did not get a ranged hit in. But we did not take any ranged damage. Like I said, some of the mobs you will. So we rolled for strength. Both of them would have passed, even with a plus one. We get to attack with the axe, and that is more than enough damage, because he's got 20 life. So you roll for gold. we got three. I won't give myself any of this gold or any of the, any, and I'll take that potion off as well, because I'm not playing a full dungeon, so it's a bit cheaty. So I won't give myself the gold or the XP, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So we've got three gold pieces. How the XP works with the boss is you get... The boss's life points minus your level. So we've got 20 life points minus level one. So that would be 19 XP you would have got for killing that boss. And you know, you do not have to, like a lot of games, we don't have to backtrack out of the dungeon. 
We get to leave by, well, they said a back door, could be one of these doors, I suppose, thematically. And you get one extra gold for each room you've completed, I think. Anyway, um, there are backtracking rules. Say we decided this wasn't the boss fight, we, we needed to backtrack, and we wanted to backtrack all the way here to come out of this door. You roll a d6 for each room. Like, if we if we went into that room, that's a five, that's okay. Four, that's okay. Oh, four, that's okay. Six. So if you roll a six, there's a wandering monster. So in that room, you then roll on your monster table, six, which is the boss in this case, so you re-roll five. So then you'd fight the Axeman Executioner in that room. Yeah, so if you want to backtrack, you roll for it. So, oh yeah, how I normally play. This is how compact this game is. This is an A5 notebook. That half of the page is the character sheet. This is the mobs that I've fought. And this is the map. And this is, a, like I was talking about earlier, this is one of the mini zines. Do I have one? I have two. I have micro tales, and that's a normal zine. That's like full size dungeons. That's quite a thick book. It's about 60 pages, 50, 60 pages. This is a mini zine. It's about 30 pages. And um, yeah, you only get encounter each room once. And the zines all come with a predefined character. You don't have to play the predefined character, but you can if you want. Um, I don't know what else to say. This is it. Microchap RPG. A lot of it is free. The stuff that isn't free is exceptionally good value. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, if you want to ask me any more questions ask them if you want to see any more videos maybe a full length dungeon right from start to finish which could be quite involved it could be quite a long video or it could be split into several videos ask and you will get thank you very much see you again